Hello everyone, and welcome to this video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Odin Sphere for the PlayStation 2. The game was released in 2007 for the PlayStation 2, and was made by Atlas and developed by Vanillaware. The game has since been re-released and remastered for the PlayStation 3 and 4, but today in this video, we're going to be looking a look at the PlayStation 2 original version. So, this side-scrolling game about mythical characters and mythical places. Is it any good? Let's take a more detailed look. Odin Sphere's story is set in a mythical world of Eronia, which is divided into multiple nations, scattered across the entire land. Each of these nations is essentially at war with each other, and while the two most powerful nations are fighting over a powerful artifact known as the Cauldron, other nations are also fighting within themselves. The game's story goes on to show you events from several of these different nations, and how everything that happens is all connected. It's a very dark story, with lots of death and destruction, which honestly, I wasn't really expecting when I first looked at this game, and saw that it goes on about Odin, the Fire Realm, Fairy Kingdom, and such forth. Atlas took a very dark route with this game, and its characters, and the events which happen in the story, and it does a very good job of this. I have to say that the story is exceptionally well told. I didn't feel at any point that the story dipped or got boring, or at any point that the game just got very dull. I found that I was engrossed in the whole story and wanted to know what would happen next. Once one part of the story was done, you was shown Alice, who is a female character reading the story, and she basically decides which book that you're going to read and what happens next. And the more books that she reads, the more you find out about the story and its characters. I have to be honest with you on this one and say that this game's dark story and events which unfold are perhaps some of the best storytelling I've ever seen in a video game. The game is over 10 plus years old now, and even if you were to play this today, even on the original PlayStation 2 or the remastered PlayStation 3 or 4 versions, it really is a masterpiece of storytelling, and this is one that you cannot miss. It is an epic story. The game has you play several different characters during the story, with each one changing at different points depending on what book that you are reading. At the start of the game, you control Gwendolyn, who is Odin's daughter. You see how badly her father treats her, and he isn't exactly sure about the war that's going on, but he keeps going on nevertheless. You witness Gwendolyn fall in love with the Shadow Knight, and how she's also got conflicting feelings throughout the entire game about what she's doing and if it's right or wrong. You also play as other characters, such as Mercedes, who witnesses her mother die at the hands of Odin, and how she's betrayed by her own family as they lost for power. A mini civil war then breaks out, and she has to deal with this before anything else, and she also has a whole pressures of being queen forced upon her. Other characters, such as the Shadow Knight, show a different side of the story as well, as we're given insight into characters who essentially end up working for both sides for a short time. And during this time, we're also shown just how cruel and wicked war can make others become. There are various other characters you play in the game, and each one has their own story to tell, with each one being very different from the other. Some events are longer for others, while certain characters have much harder battles than others. It's kind of mix and match. It's a very different cast of characters, with each one handling very different from the other. When the game stops you playing as Gwendolyn and forces you to play as Cornelius, for example, I was really, really thrown for a loop, because of just how differently he handles Gwendolyn. It's a great mixture of characters with their own thoughts and feelings, and considering what's happening in the world, I found it impossible not to dislike any of them, because while one character may be evil from one person's perspective, you're then shown that character from their side, and you suddenly realise not everything is as it seems. The gameplay for the game consists of a scrolling fighting style. You start the game off and walk around on the screen and battle enemies, and then once all the enemies have been dispatched, you're then given a chest with items, and have the option of choosing which area to travel to next. The deeper you go into the levels, the more enemies and eventual bosses you will end up facing, with each location being extremely harder than the previous one. The game is also extremely annoying with its difficulty spikes, which I haven't seen in a video game since before or after. What I mean by this is that you can do the first level of the game fairly easy. However, once you try and do the second level, you're pretty much destroyed instantly. And this pattern keeps happening. You do level 2, and you want to do level 3 thinking that you're leveled up enough, 
and instead you just get completely obliterated right away. You go back to the previous level, level up more, come back to the third level, and you still get obliterated again, either by a mid-level boss or by a few enemies in the next area. The whole game basically works by practically as if it is constantly pushing you, making you go back to the previous level and spending ages trying to level up, and then when you think you're at a decent level, you're then proven wrong again within a matter of minutes. The game also doesn't tell you about levelling up either. You see, in most games you gain experience by defeating enemies, but in this game however, you don't do any of that, and instead you have to collect food during your adventures. You then travel back to base camp, then go to one of the restaurants, and then have them create meals for you. The more meals you eat, the more experience points you get, and the higher your level will become. Now, considering that you can only carry so much at any point given in the game, you're going to be doing a lot of back and forth action, collecting food, then just going back to base, eating some meals, going back into the level, collecting more food, going back to base, eating more meals, and constantly doing this over and over and over and over again. Now, this may be a slight downside to the game, however, I did find it something that was quite original and something I hadn't seen in the game before or after. Given that the original game was released all those years ago, playing all the current games that I have from then up to now, I still haven't seen anything like this in a game before. The gameplay for the game isn't like that of anything I've played before, as it was a real learning experience for me. While I have played other side-scrolling games before such as Alien Soldier, Alisa Dragoon and various others, I've never played a side-scrolling adventure game like this, and it really was an experience that I doubt I'll ever have again. The game's graphics consist of a 2D drawn animated character on a 2D drawn animated background, and pretty much right from the start you can tell that the developers made this game as a labour of love. Everything is beautifully well drawn and animated and put together, and it all runs smoothly and renders perfectly. The original PlayStation 2 version of the game runs very smoothly, with only some slight slowdown in places here and there, but it's mainly when you're fighting giant bosses. The remastered versions of the PlayStation 3 and 4 versions, however, run absolutely flawlessly, with no slowdown, even when you're fighting a giant boss or fighting a massive wave of enemies. Everything is beautifully well created for this mythical world, with all the animation running very fluidly, and it's very rare that I've seen an animation style like this before. It really does show that a lot of time and effort went into creating a game that looks like this. Pretty much within about 30 minutes of playing this game, I'd found that the art style had won me over for this game, just because of how amazing the animation looked, and then came the great characters and the great storytelling. This game's beautiful design, graphics and appearance have gone on to inspire other games such as The Vagrant and Dragon Spear, other games which look exactly like this game and take inspiration from it. The world that's been created is a very beautiful but dangerous place. You're forced into various situations with your character, where you're seeing nations at war with each other, and where on one side of the coin one nation seems rather evil, but then you flip that over and then you actually play as that nation itself, and you realise that its actions are done in what they feel is justified. Each location is very different from each other, and they are all beautifully well created. You have the beautiful forest of the fairy kingdom, to the horrifying land of the Neverworld. Each location is very well created, and each one stands out from each other. Each location also comes with its own hazards and dangers, such as when you're on the snowy mountains for example, the higher you climb, the more damage you'll receive from the cold, unless of course you're using special items which should fight off against frostbite. Then in the fire realm, you'll come to suffer burns unless you're using special cooling items to protect yourself. The whole way that the worlds and areas have been designed really shows that a lot of time and love went into making them. Every location that you travel to really shows that the developers cared about this game, and wanted to make this an experience that the gamer wouldn't forget. If you're looking at this game and are curious about buying it, then you have a few options at hand. You can purchase the original PlayStation 2 version, which can be gotten these days fairly cheaply, but in all honesty, Unless you're a collector of consoles, then it is doubtful that you're just going to randomly have a PlayStation 2 in 2018 for no particular reason. Another option is if you have a PlayStation 3 or 4, as this game was remastered and re-released for those consoles. 
The remastered version has slightly improved graphics and it runs a little better on that console compared to the original PlayStation 2. The remastered version also comes with a few new features such as a couple of extra added moves and items. However, the remastered version was also toned down with its difficulty. If you were to play the PlayStation 2 version and then the remastered version, you would instantly notice how the remastered version feels very, very easy. And while I do understand that the remastered version was made slightly easier so newcomers could enjoy the game more, to me, part of the enjoyment of this game was the fact that while I loved the game's story and its amazing characters, the gameplay itself was absolute hard as hell and a total nightmare to progress forward in the game's story. But that was also something that pushed me to level up constantly and to get better at the game and the combat, and to plan ahead before each encounter that I faced. The remastered version can sometimes essentially hand you things on a plate without actually forcing you to get better at the game. I feel this is okay if you just want to enjoy the game's story, but at the same time I feel like it's taking something of the magic away from the game itself. This game is one of the few games I've played in my entire 35 years of gaming, which I can honestly say will stay with me as I get older. It was an experience that I never will forget, be it from the great storytelling, the fantastically well created characters, or the insanely hard combat. I cannot recommend this game enough, be it either the original versions or the remastered ones. You cannot afford to miss this gem of a game, because it really is a diamond among all the dirt out there. It's a true gem of a game, and I cannot recommend it enough. Well, that's it for this review guys, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and please subscribe.